contestants left. Fast finger first again, put the four answers in the correct order in the fastest time. You're next to play for a possible one million pounds. Audience, nice and quiet, please. Here comes the next question. Starting with the shortest, put these film actors in order of height. Tom Cruise, Danny DeVito, Clint Eastwood, Brad Pitt. OK, let's see. That's probably quite straightforward, actually. Let's see the, uh, the right order, then, starting with the shortest, first of all. Uh, Danny DeVito, easily the tiniest. Then it's Tom Cruise, who's not actually much taller than him. Then it's Brad Pitt, uh, Magellan's hero. Then it's Clint Eastwood, my hero. Right, that's the right order. Now, nine left. How many of those got it right? Uh, quite a few. Who was fastest? John Sexton in 5.54 seconds. John! You press the button, you did everything. <laughs> You're making really good. I want to. I thought you did. That's why you're here, I expect. Here we go again. This is John Sexton, a racing journalist from Beverly in East Yorkshire. Up in the audience, his wife, Margaret, uh, who he met when he was buying a Pink Floyd LP. And she was selling it. 15 questions, £1 million. Three brand new lifelines. John's got 50-50. He's got phone a friend. And he's got ask this audience. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, John, uh, after all this build-up, you better get question one right, really, haven't yeah, you? Have, yeah. um, have a look for £100. Here it is. What's the popular name of the UK national flag? Union Jack. Unity John. Unified Jim. Unique Jeff. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'd go for Union Jack. That's the right answer. You've got £100. <laughs> Have a look. Question number two is for £200. You've still got those lifelines. Here we go. Which of these is a musician and TV presenter? Jules France. Jules Belgium. Jules Luxembourg. Jules Holland. It's Jules Holland. Right, answer. You've got £200. <laughs> Are you reading everything twice? I am, yes. <laughs> I thought you were using <laughs> OK, question number three for £300. Have a look. Where in the body are the tonsils? Throat, lungs, feet, stomach. If you give me the wrong answer on this, John, there's something terribly wrong with you. <laughs> yes, I'd have to be a bit deformed. They're, they're in the throat. They are in the throat. You've got £300. OK, question number four for £500, no problem so far. John, just be aware of those lifelines. They are there if you need them. You probably won't. This is question number four for 500 quid. What kind of fish can be rainbow or brown? Trout, place, mackerel, eel. It's trout. Not place? No. Rainbow place. Rainbow place. That could brown, be a soap opera. Brown mackerel? It's <laughs> the right answer. You've got 500 quid. Going rather well, isn't it? Um, yes, okay, big, <laughs> for the moment. Big milestone, first big milestone. Okay, let's make sure you uh, go home with at least £1,000. You've got all those lifelines. Have a look at question number five, it'll guarantee you're going home with at least a grand. Here it is. Which of these was created by Jim Henson? Wombles, Clangers, Wooden Tops, Muppets. It's Muppets, Chris. You really are reading everything twice, aren't you? I am, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like your sister told you. She'll be terribly I everything proud. she tells me. She'll be terribly proud. <laughs> it's the right answer, you've got £1,000. Well played, John. That's really good. <laughs> Have a look at question number six. It's for £2,000. Here it is. Which of the British Isles is home to a tailless breed of cat? Isle of Wight. Lundy Island, Anglesey, Isle of Man. It's the Isle of Man. <laughs> Final answer? Final answer. It's the right answer, you've got £2,000. <laughs> what up? <laughs> do you have, I mean, as a racing journalist, do you, yeah. do you bet yourself? 
I do. Successfully? Occasionally. <laughs> well, that's quite important, isn't it? I mean, and some racing journalists won't do it at all. I mean, they actually won't get involved with betting. And... No, I, I'm one of those who believe that if you, if you give tips to people, which I do every day in, in my paper, um, I, I think you should put your money where your mouth is so it hurts you as well as it hurts yeah. everybody else. <laughs> OK, John, fingers yeah. crossed. Okay. Uh, you've got £2,000. OK, have a look at question number seven. You've got all three lifelines. This is for £4,000. Have a look at it. According to the rhyme, who took the kettle off again after Polly had put it on? Sylvie, Sonny, Suki, Sooty. God, it's a long time since I was a child. I bet you never thought you would one day sit in front of a large television audience <laughs> so exciting Polly put, put the kettle, kettle on. <laughs> I used to say Susie took it off again. Susie's not in it. I know, so I'm thinking maybe it's Suki. Might be the Beverly version. Perhaps it's Suki. Well, you got 2,000, you got three lifelines. Mm. Sylvie, Sunny, Suki or Sooty? Suki. Suki. Not Sooty. No, not Sooty. <laughs> not Sylvie, not Sunny. Sylvie took it off again? No, that wasn't right. Sunny took it off again? No, I don't think so. I'll play Suki. You save your life, lads. I'm not doing it for a million, I can promise you. Um, we well, go just... to phone a friend and ask them the words of Polly put the kettle on. Uh, yeah, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> you can't imagine. You what? You're over the lawn. <laughs> Maybe one, maybe one. <laughs> Take your time, John, but it's yeah. worth £4,000. You would lose a 1000 though, um, if you gave me a wrong answer. Yeah. It's Suki. It has to be Suki. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £4,000. <laughs> John, here you are, a fully grown man. <laughs> <laughs> the awful thing is, all these spotty little under fives all over the country be shouting Shout the right answer on the telly. <laughs> you got there, you got there, Suki. <laughs> now, you got £4,000. Have a look at question number eight. It's for £8,000. You've got all three lifelines. Here it is. Who had a UK number one single in August 2000 with the song Music? Mel C. Sonic. Kylie Minogue. Madonna. Apart from Pink Floyd, my knowledge of pop music is rather thin. So I'm going to ask the audience. OK, I think they might know as well. Uh, audience, on your keypads, please. First chance to help John, hopefully get him up to £8,000. This is the question. Who had a UK number one single in August of 2000, last year, with the song Music? A, B, C or D, all vote now. Uh, that's good, I think. It's high. It is high. Maybe wrong. They may all be clearly mad, but it's, uh, it's high. <laughs> I'll go with the audience on Madonna. Final answer. Final answer. Even though you've never ever met these people and you've only seen them in the dark. That's right, and I've never heard the song. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have, actually. Oh, final answer. It is my final answer. It's the first lifeline. It's got you up to £8,000. <laughs> Have a look at question number nine for £16,000, but, John, you would lose £7,000 at this point if you give me a wrong answer here. Take your time, have a look at it. Which of these traditional English counties no longer exists? Cambridgeshire, Cheshire, Cornwall, Cumberland. <clears throat> it's Cumberland, Chris. Sure. As sure as I can be. Sure than Polly put the kettle on? I'm much sure than it was Suki <laughs> taking the kettle off, yes. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer, John. You've got £16,000. <laughs> Cumberland actually uh, became part of Cumbria. 
John, have a look at question number 10 of a possible 15. Here it is. What kind of insect is a swallowtail? What kind of insect is a swallowtail? Butterfly, grasshopper, dragonfly, beetle. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that it's a butterfly. And I'm going to play butterfly. Final answer. Final answer. You ever seen one? Not that I know of. Can you afford to lose £15,000? I can, but my bookmaker can't. <laughs> you haven't, you've just won £32,000. Congratulations! John, I don't, know what, um, I don't know what paper you're the racing journalist for, but I think I'm going to follow your tips next season. <laughs> Have a look at that. Whatever happens, you go home with at least that amount for £32,000. What was the name of that horse? We do want to give you we that. We do want to give you that. <laughs> you got £32,000. We do want to give you that. Uh, you want to hold it? No, I'd rather not. Why? It's yours. It's I your know, name on. but I'd rather not. Are you going to be like this all evening? I'm a, yeah, I'm a racing man. I'm very superstitious. OK. But it's yours. Whatever happens, John, uh, you play brilliantly. Apart from a hiccup with Polly put the kettle on, you've been fine. Um, John Sexton, at the moment, you've got £32,000. You're five away from a possible million. Is this starting to sink into you? Oh, God. <laughs> no. This is for £64,000. You've got two lifelines. Have a look at it. You might as well play this. Bodega Bay is the main setting of which Alfred Hitchcock film? The Birds, Rebecca, The 39 Steps, Psycho. And the 39 Steps. What are you thinking, John? You're looking very active. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I wish I'd taken more notice when I watched The Birds and watched Psycho, because I'm pretty sure it's one or other of those. And I'm going to do something very silly and go 50-50. Why is that silly? <coughs> because it would probably leave me those two. What odds would you give at this moment on you getting a million quid? Me getting a million quid at this moment? Mm. About 50,000 to one. <laughs> I'll take it, I think. I wouldn't. <laughs> it's, good, it's good odds to me. You're five questions away, you've got two lifelines. Mm -hmm. I'll take 50-50. OK, computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave John the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Oh. Now, you said the birds or Psycho. I did. Psycho's gone. But now uh, you're worried Rebecca's about Rebecca, aren't you? Rebecca is set in Cornwall. Mandalay. So, surely. I'll play the birds. Final answer. Final answer. Why are you saying like that? Final answer. Because I wouldn't be too surprised if I was wrong. <laughs> John, if you'd said to me, Rebecca, you would still have £32,000. You've just won £64,000! <laughs> Your place was a picture, John Sexton. You were... <laughs> Your face oh. was a picture. Oh. <laughs> sixty-four thousand pounds. Give him a big hand. What up? Whatever happens, you got thirty-two at this oh. moment. You got sixty-four. Have a look at this one, John. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> a few bets in there. Yeah. But we don't want to give you that. <laughs> you got sixty-four thousand pounds at this moment, John Sexton. You're four away from a million. And you've still got to phone a friend. Serious phone call or something. <laughs> Take your time. Have a look at question number 12. <clears throat> this is for £125,000. Have a look at it. Which fruit is the principal ingredient of Slivovitz brandy? Cherry, apricot, orange, plum. I'm 
I'm going to have to phone a friend, Chris. You need a real hard drinking mate here. <laughs> I'm going to ring my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Sorted. OK, you've got 64,000. You obviously don't have to take Mummy's advice necessarily. Um, it's for £125,000. What's not. Mum called? I can't call her Mum. Uh, Doris. Doris, OK. Yeah. Uh, you'd better not tell her how much, I think. Don't tell her how much? No. Why, will you be in trouble? <laughs> She'll be in trouble. OK. I won't tell her. Hello? Doris? Yes. Good evening, it's Chris Darren here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hello. Oh, hello, Chris. Hiya, I've got John here. You remember John, your son? I do, really. You remember him? <laughs> uh, he's stuck on one particular question. He's doing fine, but he's stuck on one particular question. Yes. Now, the next voice you hear, you should recognise, because it's your son. So he'll tell you the question. There are four possible answers. One of those is the right answer. That's the one we need. Yes. OK, Doris. Right, OK, thank lots you. of luck. John, you've got 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Mum, which, yes. which fruit is the principal ingredient of Slivervitz brandy. Is it cherry, apricot, orange, or plum? It's plum. Plum? Plum. You're absolutely sure? I'm positive. God, you're a great mum. I'm sure. I love you, mum. <laughs> <laughs> OK, mum. Yeah, drink, thank you. If you didn't Slivervitz, I'd love you, mum. <laughs> Well, you love Mummy. You won't love her that much if she's wrong, of course, John. I still will. So I mentioned that. Well, of course you will. You'll love her more, though, if she's right. She's just turned 80, so she's done very really? well. Really? Yeah. I will how go... How much, um, at the age of 80, mm -hmm. how much Slivovitz brandy does she drink, you know, <laughs> in an average day? She's reached the age of 80, so she must be well on it. So I'll go with it. She's I'll very go confident. With, I will go with Plum. Yeah. Final answer, Mum says Plum. Mum says Plum. That's good enough for me. Mum is right. You got yeah! one hundred. We love you, Mummy! 80 years old, uh, oh, she certainly yeah. knows her sliver bits, Brandy. You've got 125,000, but you're shaking. Hold it again, you're shaking. I, I'm shaking like a leaf. <laughs> I'm shaking like a leaf. This is, this is much harder than picking horses. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now, you've got £125,000, thanks to your 80-year-old mum and her knowledge of uh, <laughs> sliver bits, Brandy. Now, the next question... It's getting a bit close to your daydream, yes. except the lifeline, sadly, have gone. gone. Yeah. Uh, next question is worth a quarter of a million pounds. If you give me the wrong answer, you've still got £32,000. You know that's guaranteed. Yeah. But you would drop £93,000. You don't have to play this. You've got no lifelines. Have a look at it. Question number 13 of a possible 15. It's worth a quarter of a million. The phrase, history is bunk is associated with which famous American? Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, Theodore Roosevelt, George Custer. It's worth a quarter of a million to you. thinking I want to play, but I'm also thinking that I might be wrong. <laughs> what do you think? I could do an awful lot with 125,000 and 93 would be down. On the other hand, I may be right. So I'm going to play. Shh, audience, please. don't have to play this question, John. No, I know. But I'm going to play, Chris. And I'm going to play Henry Ford. Why Henry Ford? Because I think he said it. <laughs> That's quite a good reason. I just hope... I hope your reasoning is, uh, is sound. It sounds a good reason to do it, but it's up to you. A bad reason to do it is that if you gave me the wrong answer, if that was the wrong answer, you dropped 93,000. I'm going to play. play. Final answer. Final answer, Henry Ford. Final 
about Sir Henry Ford. You see this check here for £125,000? Yeah. You don't need that anymore? I need 32 grand. No, you just won 250. <laughs> Grand. It's all down to your money. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Have a look. This is where you are at this moment. You're getting horribly close to that dream. Two hundred. You see, you're enjoying touching them now, aren't you? Have I am enjoying that touching them. But we don't want to give you that. I'd be delighted to give you that. You can obviously walk away with that. You've got no lifelines. But question number 14 of a possible 15 is worth £500,000. Now, we've only ever had one racing journalist on the show before. <laughs> ever, since we started. Yeah. It was a guy called John Randall. Yeah. He went home with £500,000. I know he did. This is question number 14 of a possible 15. You're two away from one million. This is for 500,000 pounds. Who was the Prime Minister when women first got the right to vote in Britain? Lloyd George, Salisbury, Balfour, Bona Law. I would love to play this question. Oh, God. If I was sitting at home, I'd know that I'd play this. <laughs> if I was in front of my computer, I'm... <sighs> You've got a quarter of a million at this moment. You can take it home. What are you thinking? Have you got an inkling at all? Yeah. I have an inkling. Women got the right to vote immediately after the First World War, something like 1919. Lord George was the Prime Minister from 1960. So he would still be Prime Minister when women got the vote. if my dates are right. <laughs> yeah. And am I willing to risk 218,000 on my dates being right? The problem is I don't know when Salisbury, Balfour and Bonalaw were Prime Minister. Salisbury, I think, was earlier than Lloyd George, so I don't think it's him. Bonalaw, early 20s, I think. Possible. Love to play this, Chris. I really would love to play Lord George. But if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm going to take the money. I think it's Lloyd George, but I'm going to take it. Final answer. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'll kick myself forever if it comes up Lloyd George. But I've got to take the money, Chris. That is my final answer. I'm taking the money. OK, give him a huge hand. Now. Have a look at that. That's a great nice word, John. You've got a brilliant possession. You've got £250,000.
Now, just before you go... Oh. <laughs> if you had said to me, bone a law, you'd have lost £218,000. I know what's coming. If you said to me, Salisbury, you'd have lost £218,000. If you'd said to me, Balfour, you'd have lost £218,000. <laughs> Lloyd George, John Sexton, was the right answer. Oh, he knew my father. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks to Mum, John Sexton takes £250,000. Back to East Yorkshire.